not believe the discussions that have gone before we started actually filming this. I cannot even explain. Anyway, hello everyone. Welcome to Toad TV. I am Mary Beth. I'm Helen. We are the creative hands and minds behind Toad Hollow. And welcome back. This is going to be a short video just to show you one particular project that we were working on. But that we are starting. It's epic. It is. It is epic. So this is one of the Mary Beth says she's never going to do something. Yep. And three or four years down the road. I need time. The brain has to percolate. Got to let it all settle down and sift down and everything. And then all of a sudden I want it. a good it. idea. <laughs> well, the thing is, I want this. This is a... I cannot expect you to do this for me. <laughs> so if I want this, I have to do it myself. This is most definitely the issue of product versus process. This is product. Yes. This is a product related project. We both want the finished product. Very much so. And think that we want to go through the effort of getting to it. So, but it, it, it's not like we're out chopping wood or anything right. like that. I get to cross stitch. I mean, oh no. <laughs> you have to go into your little corner in your comfortable chair and cross stitch. Right. Oh, and I'm going to make you listen to a really good book while you're doing it. That is your punishment. Yes. <laughs> I can deal with this. This is something I can deal with. Okay. So. so. How did this all come about? Yeah, that's the big thing. How did this all come about? It How all are you came about... responsible this time? <laughs> it all started on Pinterest. It's Pinterest. No, actually, it's, all the it's yarn's not. fault. It's the yarn's fault. It's all <laughs> the yarn's fault. We go to Pinterest to get inspiration photos to make our yarn. We go in and we think, okay, I want to do something about the fairies in the wood. Don't expect fairies in the wood. I'm just using this, pulling this out of you. Right. Okay. Um, I want a picture of fairies in the woods that I want to dye yarn to go with. So we go to Pinterest and search fairies in the wood. And Pinterest gives you things that follow your thing, but then every so often it throws in something. We think you might like this. That has absolutely nothing to do with what you're doing. And when we are weak-willed, we follow All those, the time. <laughs> those tangents. We go down these rabbit holes. And prepare yourself. This is a long story. Okay, so... This started with me saying, oh my God, it's a bumblebee bear. Right. So we had to go find the bumblebee bear. And this is the bumblebee bear because did we leave the bumblebee bear? No, he had to come home with us. So that's the bumblebee bear. This is all the art of Tranifer. She is on Etsy and I will put her link down below. So we got him in a sticker. And we got him in a print that we're going to frame. Any of you who have been with us for a while know about Spike and Drusilla. For our dogs, whom we adored. Absolutely adored. This reminds me so much of Spike. Yes. This just reminds it's me. Just the goofy smile. So much of Spike. The big old hobbit feet. It's just, this is Spike and a bumblebee bear. So we ended up in her Etsy shop and we, we found the bumblebee bear and he went into our cart. And then I saw this one and I just, I adore this print. I think this is so beautiful. Yeah. I love the sentiment behind it. I just love everything about it. So this is also gonna be framed. And then we got the sticker. This sticker. And then we saw a mushroom bear. And like the bumblebee bear is Spike. This, this is Hugo. This is the floof. <laughs> this is the floof. That's the floof. <laughs> so the floof. That is like the floof if it lies. <laughs> he even sits like that. <laughs> so. We stopped ourselves. We're like, okay, that's, that's it. it. You cannot spend a ton of money on this. Put the cart through. Let's get back to work. Right. So we got back to work. And then Pinterest sent me something else. The evil, evil Pinterest. <laughs> and it was this absolutely stunning uh, depiction of, a, of the white rabbit from Alice. And we went, because Mary Beth went, this was Mary Beth's fault this time, to okay, find it. look at this. Right. I mean... Honestly, if that was like $200 for a painting, I probably would have paid it. Right. 
So Meredith went off to because she thought she was going to go find a print of it and we would get another print and then we could go back to work. But it's cross stitch. It's not a print. It's a cross stitch pattern. It's a cross stitch pattern. And not only does she have that, she's got a whole bunch of other really, really cool ones. So we're like, okay, well, that's a full coverage cross stitch. Are we really going to do full coverage cross stitch? And then we went into the <laughs> this. Yes, I am. The rest of her shop and I mean come on <laughs> it's Alice in Wonderland it's books it's forest it's cottage core it's everything that I am right I mean it even has a watch on it I mean I, I can design a room around this yes like I'm a designer I would love to have somebody design a room around this <laughs> So Honestly, we bought a whole bunch of cross stitch patterns. We did. And then we picked these two as the ones that we're starting with because we're not only going to do these, we're going to do others. Um, but Mary Beth figured it out that if we do 100 stitches a day, a little 10 by 10 grid, it's going to take us two and a half years, 2.67 years to finish. And you know, it's worth it. We're long haul project people. Yeah, we stick I with don't things all start the time. things all the time and then leave them halfway through or a quarter of the way through or, you know, barely started. So before we went back to work, we placed our orders for all of our fabrics, our needles, our threads. So we're going to open all those parts because all of the parcels have finally arrived. Right. So we're going to open everything up and show you exactly what we we're going to be using right to make these epic projects okay so we have switched camera angles to show you everything because we go all in <laughs> all the stuff all right so we want a gridded fabric because um, if you're doing full coverage any bit of help you can get is right. a good thing all right off camera, I'm going to cut this. Not the fabric, just the other. All right, so here we go. So we, um, you can find very easily 25 count even weave, um, 20 count that are gridded, but, and 14 count. We didn't want to go 14 count because that's going to make way too big a project. Um, 20 count is a little rough on the eyes and we're trying to make this as easy as possible so that we actually continue with this project. So I finally found on Etsy at uh, this place dying for cross stitch. She had big enough pieces of the, because the other problem is finding a piece that is big enough because these are huge projects. Mine is going to be 13 and a half inches across, I think, and 40 and a half down. Right. And that's not including borders around the outside. And mine, I think, is 17 by 22. So um, we needed big fabrics. So these are, I think they're 30 by... 43 by 60. Okay, so the, each piece is 43 by 60. Mine, I will be able to get two of them on, ultimately. But, I mean, look. This is how big these things, this project is going to be. This huge is, this is the essentially the working area that i need with flies um so and mary beth needs 40 inches long right so this is going to work um there's going to be plenty of extra fabric i'm not going to do it in the middle i'm going to start over the edge i'm going to measure in my three inches and then start at the edge and then work my way from there so that i will have plenty right. of extra and we have extra space so we can even go four or five inches in if we want to give our framer right a little more to work with and so. also um there's going to be lots left over for even if it's not one of these epic projects it can be any kind of project right and, and what it's I, it's full coverage what i love which you don't normally run into is they surged it for us well that's nice so we're not going to have the the, the thread shredding on the sides yeah. That was, that's very nice. Okay. So that's the fabric. All right. So then our threads. 
Mine is calling for 100 different colors. So, I went to 123 Stitch and ordered 100 colors. Mine calls for about 80. So I went to 123 Stitch. Oh, look, they look exactly the same. There are some that are carryovers. Yeah. However, we decided that um, for 66 cents of skein, it really, we also, could afford to get each of us our own colors. Probably on several of these, going to need more than one skein to finish the project. So we will um, know where to go to get yeah. them. So. Now, we have all these colors and searching through every single color to try and find the one that you need at that moment can be frustrating. So the last thing we got was boxes to sort our threads and each of us will get our own box. Your presence, may happiness follow you wherever you go. Yes, please. It comes with stickers so that we can put the stickers on the boxes and keep track of where everything is. It even has blank ones. So in case you have ones that uh, they don't have a number for, you can write it in. Extra dividers, dividers for over here. Plastic very nice. nice. And then these are bobbin winders. Bobbin winders. So what you do is you snap the bobbin in there. This is snapped to the edge of your box. And then you can twist it and it will wind the thread onto the bobbin as fast as you like. And I I will probably bobbinate as I go. As I come to a color, I'll throw it on a bobbin and then put it in its little spot in here. I'll put them in numerical order. Um, I don't think I'm going to be bobbinating my colors. I think I'm just going to tuck the skeins in to the, um, the little cubicles. And I think we can get, um, I think there are 36. There were 36 slots. 36 and you can easily get two or three to a, a spot so that you're going to be able to get all of them in. I'll be able to get all 100 in the box. And what I do is I just take it directly from the skein. Right. So if you just pull. My problem is, is then the skein starts once you start. The first pull is great, but then it starts to. So I, I will probably bobbinate. If I, I get go. to a point where I'm getting frustrated and I can't find it, yeah. then I'll bobbinate them. But for the most part, I probably will not be bobbinating. I will put them in to their spots in numerical order. And then as I need one, I'll throw it on the bobbin. Right. So, so that is what we are doing. This is the plan. Right. We have all the pieces. Now we are setting aside a certain amount of time every day to try and get in the stitching. Uh, we're going to see if that actually works because we were supposed to do it starting at 10 o'clock this morning and it is now 11.51 and we have not started it yet. However, we are going to. The start will first be getting everything organized. organized. So. That's what's up next. Yep. All right. Yep. Stay tuned Come and along. wait till you see. Right how it winds up. And I will put, as I said earlier, I'm going to put a link to everything, including the Etsy shop where we got the patterns. Okay. So. Excellent.
but I do not want to bobbinate everything before I get started, so it's going to work for now. Things are in order, except for these two, which fell out of order. So they will go into order when they get bobbinated. Um, and now I get to start. That's all I care about, is I can actually like, take out my fabric and start stitching soon. Okay, day one. First hundred stitches in. It does not look like very much based on the amount of stress and cursing that was involved. Just getting things situated and figuring out that all the needles we bought were the wrong needles and that kind of thing. But I'm not turned off yet. Come back. We're back. Yeah. <laughs> It's a couple weeks from the videos you have just seen. Yeah, we are here on the 17th now, and we're here to show you our progress that we've done so far. So, uh, do you want to go first or shall I? Uh, sure, I will go first. I am using Pattern Keeper um, for my tracking and um, sanity. Well, yeah. Um, I had bought it for those of you who remember, I have another full coverage project that is started and abandoned. Um, I would not call it abandoned. I would put it, say, put aside for right now. It is, and I am seriously considering um, total tangent. I'm going to start it again, but chop it. And I'm only going to take like the bottom part of it where the animals are. No topic for another day. Okay. Um, anyway, my pattern is 121,500 stitches. I have done 1,274 so far. Where does it tell you this? Right here. Oh, okay. Um, oh, all right. So you've crossed 1%. So I'm 1% done. Um, we did not get our surprise surprise. We didn't, we do not get our hundred stitches a day. Sometimes we don't get a stitch on it at all. Other days um, we get a little over a hundred stitches. Right. So it's, it, we're trying to give ourselves a little bit each morning right. time to do it, but there are just mornings that it doesn't happen. Do not lend itself to it. So anyway, uh, again, here is a picture of my pattern. I oh just, my god! I know. Every time I look at it, I'm like, yeah, it's worth it. Yep, so worth it. Uh, I've started right here. Okay. I can see the flower. Yeah. All right, so I'll hold this up. So she's up in this corner here. So this is what I have done so far. Look at all that confetti stitching. So here is the, the that, that flower right there. Is this, I think that's his nose. Yeah. The, 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 oh my God, be. you're actually getting to him. I, well, it may be not, it may be part of his ears. I don't know. We'll no, his see. ears are too far over. I think, I mean, are too far, high up. Yeah, well, I think that's depends. his nose. Because look I at really do. Oh, no, yeah. I guess in the relation to where the flower yeah, is. Yeah, I really yeah. think that might be his nose. I oh, thought that's so I'm, exciting. I'm just going along. Essentially, what I was doing was I was doing blocks where I would just do, I would only stitch what was in the 10 by 10 block. And then I would go park the thread in the next block or wherever the thread belonged. Um, that just got, the threads were too much. Um, I don't like parking. I don't like having all those threads flying around. And I don't want to cut the, th the thread. Okay. Um, after doing, you know, when it's, it's done. So what I changed to was now I am, if I can, without losing my place or having to travel too far, I'm using up the thread. So that if I start a color, I will use up the thread in this general area then if it's not if there's nothing left and i still have a workable thread left i'll put it back on the bobbin um i'm not going to leave it hanging out um so essentially what i'm doing is i had a whole bunch of threads parked and i have two left still to do and then i'm going to go back to this top row okay and start working in this top row here and filling in going along because of what it, ultimately what I'm going to do is fill in the entire top row. Okay. And then I'll come, I think what I will do 
So now, yes. okay, uh, you're probably going to come back this way. Okay, so you are, um, you're going to get the next, once you get this cleaned up down here, you're right. going to take the next color and do the stitches that are in that block and then continue to work your way through the thread as much as you can. Right. Okay, I got yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so that's what works for me because starting and stopping threads just because just to keep it you know so rigidly in a 10 by 10 square does not work having the threads hanging out is not working for me so this is this now is you were only working. using one needle yeah for the entire project so far yeah i only have the one needle going okay so um then that's what by using up the thread right allows me to do that okay so, um so that is my progress so far. I mean, it doesn't look like much, but it's really, it's starting to look like something. Yes. Um, I'm enjoying it. I really do enjoy uh, stitching it um, as long as I have time to do it. And I you know, just put my book on and do it. Um, we were talking about Q snaps and we were looking at scroll frames and everything like that. Right now, I'm working with it in hand. I'm sitting at the dining room table. I'm not sitting in my my comfy chair, right? Um, so that I can kind of I have all my stuff spread out in front of me. It's just it's working okay. right now. Just having it in in hand, no hoop. I have to no figure frame. out how to do it. I think I want to roll up the bottom a bit. Yeah, the fabric management is a problem because it's a very large piece of yeah. fabric, and when I'm trying to get come up from underneath. I have to fight my way around a lot of fabric before I get to that point. So I would like to at least get the bottom rolled up and clipped so that I don't have right. to worry about that. So that's, that's why we were talking about like Q snaps or, cause I saw somebody on my uh, YouTube, she puts hers in a Q snap and then she has, she positions ribbons so that she can tie her fabric around the Q snap. Mm -hmm. um, so that you're just holding essentially the Q-snap. I'm not sure I want to hold on to... No, I don't think so. ...the whole frame, um, which lends then I have to get a stand. Um, right. And I'm not sure I'm there yet either. That's my machine telling me it's whatever it's telling me. Uh, it's a Samsung Galaxy. I know iPhones and iPads. Uh, and it makes all sorts of noises, and I have no idea what they mean. <laughs> it's chirping and at you. It is. And I, I like R2D2. Use it for my Kindle and for Pattern Keeper, and that's it. Okay. Um, so, yeah, really enjoying the process. Um, and I'm looking forward to more progress. Yeah. I think that's very, very cool. Yeah. And I, I, it's going to be so good when you're done. I was going to say, this just, I just have to keep looking at this. Yeah. Because I want this. So badly. Yeah. That's awesome. I am doing mine since I don't have a Kindle or I, I don't have a Samsung. Um, and we discussed getting one and it seems kind of silly. I found um, it is called Markup R-XP and it's for the tablet, for the iPad. So I am doing mine on that. And so far, mine has 139,968 stitches in it overall. I have done 970, so I am at 0.69%. Um, but the fact that I have done 970 stitches right. on a full coverage is absolutely mind blowing to me. So um, this is mine. And I, again, started up here in that top left hand corner. And this is where I am. So I came over and then I'm starting to come back. So you're just working on the page. I am working on the page and I am working usually like filling in a block and within this block section. So if I have stitches that if I have to put one stitch over here and then I have more stitches over here and over here, I am filling in this block here. I have different needles going for every color that I've hit so far. I have one of those needle blocks that you can put the, the needles in and I think it holds 50 different needles. And I'll link that because we got it on Amazon. Okay. I'll link where what we got. Okay. I am, if it takes 
50, that means they're 25 on the top and the bottom. I am at like 31 or 32 so far, different colors that I have queued up and ready to go. So what I do is I do the stitches within a certain area and then put it into the and block it. and get ready to take it out when I need it again. Um, I have bobbinated my colors. I said I wasn't going to, but the colors don't, the boxes that we got, the um, skeins don't fit the same way I thought they would. So it's too tight. It's, it's really meant to, for bobbinated threads. Yeah. So, so it I works have, very well. I mean, I find it much easier to find the, the thread I need bobbinated than yeah. scroll, searching yes. through. For... So I, what I've been doing, I, as I hit a new color, I bobbinate that's it what and I'm put doing it in. Too. So that's where I am so far. You can't really see anything. Yours is so dark up here. Yeah. So I am here on this, this side. So you're, like you're starting to get a little lighter here. Yeah. Um, on markup, do you get the whole pattern in one shot or do you have to scroll from page to page? You have to scroll from page to page. Okay. Because mine with Pattern Keeper... Oh, okay. See, I get the whole thing. You can't see anything. Um, so that I just keep going over and then I just expand out for uh, okay. the area I'm working on. No, mine does it by page. And what I do is I expand the page because there's an awful lot on one page. Oh, yeah. And, and mine is marked by page. So the, okay. the orange... See this orange line? That's a page. Okay. So that if I wanted to keep it to page. But I'm thinking um, I want to just go across the top because the top has the least amount in it. Right. Get that done while I'm still gung-ho. Right. Um, I think what I am going to wind up doing is um, going like the top three blocks taking them all the way across okay and then come back like doing the next three blocks type of thing and do it that way um so that i'm just making progress making yeah, yeah you'll see the progress going across um all these dark stitches are like a whole bunch of different colors so that um yeah, there's a lot of confetti trying to do to find like i was trying to find where i was this morning and trying to figure out which one of the highlighted stitches was the one that i was actually oh, doing okay. and ivy is barking at me and i was getting very frustrated and uh but not so much frustrated flustered i was getting very flustered and i need to just calm myself down and count it out and it's fine you know but um Having the gridded fabric is just oh such a life changer. changer, such a life changer. So that is where I am, and it is going strong. I am enjoying it. I really am. Um, oh yeah, I get quite um, itchy when yeah, I don't get to do annoyed it. if my life gets in the way and I right. don't get to have my stitching time um, because. I want this, I know this is going to take a long period of time, but I don't want this to be a 10 year project either. Right, and um, I also want to stay focused on it because right. I don't want it to get lost. Because if this gets lost and I have to pick it up again sometime in the future, I don't think I will. I think I will be completely overwhelmed by trying to find where exactly I am and that kind of right. thing. And it's just, um, I will say with this markup RXP, um, it's really very good as far as highlighting stitches. And then once you fig fill them in, it's very, very good at um, marking them off for you so you can see what you've done. Also, um, when you're in the markup section, because uh, it's got a button that's the symbol that you use to pick whichever uh, color you're doing next and then you go over to the markup button and when you're in the markup button you can't color in a block that isn't already highlighted so you can't oh, yeah. so you can't nice. color in something by accident um 
when you really because you have fat fingers or whatever and you really meant to highlight you really meant to color in the one that you actually were working on um it doesn't allow you to color in anything that isn't highlighted so that is i found that very very good pattern keeper is the same way so that if i'm like doing a whole bunch i can just run my finger across the area and right it's like it's only highlighting those that color of stitches yeah um so i mean also, I pattern can, keeper is in color i so can um hi i can do the full chart if i so choose it gives me all 36 pages of it um but and then i guess i could hi, uh come in and do it that way so i guess i could do it the way you're doing it but that way it doesn't give me the the options across the top to highlight okay. or mark up yeah in this section of it so i do it page by page let's see pattern keeper yes says it in color so these are this is the area that I've done so far. So you can see it's the pattern showing up, which is very nice. I don't know whether that is an option on this one or not. There's so many things that I haven't right. figured out with this pro program, so I'm not sure. That might be an option. Um, Both of these programs, um, apps are... You, you have, have to, to buy them. You have to pay for them. Um, this one is... 17.99 pounds a year it comes to about 19.95 pretty sure pattern keeper was a one shot deal okay so yeah, this i think sure is i, I have to pay for the year and done but um 20 dollars for the year to be able to do that and i can upload as many different projects into it as i want as long as they are pdfs they seem to work yeah if it's a picture that i took um, <clears throat> the ones that we're doing from the book Cross Stitch for the Earth, they that doesn't work. upload right. right. So that one doesn't work, but this one works well, and um, I can put any other cross stitch pattern that I got as a PDF into it. Yeah. And it should work. I mean, our everyday ones that we do, like the Cross Stitch for the Earth and the Owl Forest ones and everything like that, for the most part, I'm okay with them in good notes. Um, but uh, it's nice to know that you have this option. Yes, so. very much so. Okay. All right, so the only other thing we wanted to mention was, um, I don't know whether we spoke about it on here or not, but we were using a certain type of needle. Do you know what the type of needle is? I took it out. It's a Pony Black Needles. It's P-O-N-Y. Um, I had seen them on Lindy Stitches. I am still using one of them. It is actually a black needle, so I was intrigued by it because it's so much easier to see the black coming up through your fabric. Um, but they're not really like a metal, they're almost like a plastic. I don't know what they are. Um, they bend very easily. Oh my gosh. Um, and we had gotten some 28 size um, because initially we thought we were going to be stitching on 18 count fabric in the end we're stitching on 16. So the 26 is the per is the right size needle. Uh, but the 28s broke. I mean, just trying to thread the needle, I was breaking needles left and right. Um, I finally got onto it that I have to thread it. I do two strands of the thread. I have to thread it one strand at a time and then I can thread it. I could do it. And if I, as long as I got them, so that they weren't bunched up together, I can get it through, but it's just, it's frustrating. It is very frustrating. Um, and then you finally get it through and the top of the needle is bent like that. Right. Um, and now I'm noticing that the bottoms of the needle are getting bent, even the 26s, as I'm pulling them up through the tightly woven stitches. Right. Um, oh, when you're going through, when you have the one confetti stitch that's surrounded, um, so that you're really working the needle right. through fabric and thread and things like that. It's just, it's frustrating. Um, so we have abandoned those. And what we really liked best were the Pat's favorite needles, but Pat passed away and she couldn't find somebody to take on the mantle of making her needles. In the way she wanted to. Right. Um, so Pat's are no longer available. So we've gone over to Bones, B-O-H-N, which we really haven't tried yet. I think I have some john james also that i'm working with the john james gold needles are pretty good but they're, yeah they're very expensive so i think i have some that i purloined from other projects yeah okay um because since i'm doing so many different colors um it's just i have to uh 
I need a lot of needles. Yeah. But anyway, the bones are working well. Um, and I am using... And they're gold, right? We got the bone gold? Yeah. Yeah. I am using the black ones until they break or bend to the point where I can't use them anymore. And then I am discarding them and replacing them. Yeah. I am using a 26 of the pony. And that is sturdier than the 28. The 28s I gave up on. Yeah, the 28s. Yeah, you know, I, really... I broke my fifth needle in one day. And I'm like, yeah. No, oh I'm my done. gosh. There was one day where I went through probably 15 needles just trying to get them threaded. And I was ready to just start screaming. And it's, this is such a huge project and it's such an overwhelming project that the slightest thing that goes wrong will discourage you from coming back to right. it. It'll make you think, oh, really? I have to go fight the needles so yeah. that you, I mean, it's, it's worth paying the money for the pattern keeper or the markup, um, having the right fabric, having the right everything so that you continue to stay with it and it continues to be fun. Right. So, so that is where we are right now. Things are going well. Right. Um, we both are enjoying it very, very much, listening to very good books while I, we're doing it. So it's it's good. Yeah. It's very good. All right. So, so that is the Epic Cross Stitch. We will keep you updated as we move along. Right. We um, will um, update you every couple of weeks or so. Right. Uh, the last thing is just we have some random admin stuff for the shop. Um, we... Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. So... Um, you may have started to notice that um, some of our yarns are no longer dyed to order. They are just what are in stock. And we are in the final quarter of the year. Every time we dye a color, we dye four or five skeins in a pan to create that color. Uh, so if somebody orders one skein of yarn, we have four skeins left over. We have built up quite a bit of stock of the leftovers of people's colors. And... Um, as we're heading into the final quarter, we're going to start clearing some of them out. So we don't want to build up more stock. So what we're doing is we're, to, we're going to be bringing almost all of our yarns over to whatever is in stock is what is available. Um, our newest colors are still open, die to order to, through the end of the month. But um, the rest of them, if they're not already turned over, will be turned over to only what's in stock is available. Um, if for some reason you are looking for a color and it's not available, please reach out to us because nine times out of 10, we will simply tell you, yes, of course we'll do it. It will be maybe not in this dye day, but in the next dye day right. type of thing. Or we may tell you, no, I'm very sorry, that one's discontinued. If you'd like to get four or five of that color and we dye one pan just for you, we can do that. But other than that, it's going to be. Um, it's out of stock. Right. It's just, and we won't be bringing it back. So never feel embarrassed or upset about trying to get in touch with us. We don't look at it in any way other than you're one of our customers asking a question and we want to help right. you as much as we we can, but we don't want to continue adding to the overflow since we're not at shows and people aren't seeing it all the time. Um, we need to start clearing it out. So that is why we're going over to whatever is available is what is right. available. Or actually, whatever is in stock is what's available. Hey, okay, so that is it. Yes. We are done. We will <laughs> Mic drop, walk off the stage. Uh, we will be back on Friday for our live stream where we are going to be doing some yarn pairings for you. Um, for those of you that missed last Friday's video, we are going to be doing yarn pairings based on last Halloween's uh, countdown to Halloween yarns, which we based around different witch aesthetics, like the hearth witch or the kitchen witch or the sea witch. So what we are going to do is now we're going to make yarn pairings for all 13 of those. Right. And I'm really very excited about this. Yeah. So if you want to see what a sea witch would make her shawl out of or sweater, yeah, come see us on Friday. If you are new to this channel and you like what you have seen so far, thank you very much. And uh, please subscribe, like, comment helps us get found by similar minded folks um and just helps us generally so thank you thank you very much um and next tuesday we will be back with a full-on project update ha huh. helen's going to have to edit the hell out of the end of this video <laughs> all right we hope you guys have a great rest of the week go forth and create we will see you on friday live noon eastern standard time 
And then again on Tuesday at a regularly scheduled broadcast. Right. All right. Bye. Bye.